Imagine for a second your robotics team is going on a world championship event. But you also have a family event. So are you going to stay for the last few hours or are you going to go? What are the chances that you're going to win the big prize? So I regret to start this with an image that actually excludes someone. Nathan Kaufman actually had to miss the event. He's not there, so shout out to him. And sorry that I'm starting a talk about inclusion already excluding, excluding someone. Robots are amazing tools. We think of robots as these giant things that may live in factories, but we start seeing them pop up in our, in our daily lives here and there. We started teaching kids how to play with robots, how to do science, technology, engineering, and math. STEM evolved into STEAM. And I will make the point that it should really evolve into STREAM and include robotics. If you think about robotics, it is the tool that allows the merger of all of the above. It allows to, to combine what you learn about science, engineering, and math, what you want to do about art, and create things that actually do and move. There's an opportunity to improve the world through robotics. They don't just have to do precise tasks really well. They can do almost anything. And we should think ab about robotics not just as tools that could do anything, but that could enhance humans to do almost anything. Unfortunately, existing art tools like paintbrushes that have existed for thousands of years have not changed much. And they unfortunately exclude a large portion of the population. And many people who might otherwise be aspiring artists end up not even practicing. I sought out at MIT to solve that problem. My journey was inspired by an artist who also happens to be a person with cerebral palsy. Her name is Christina. Christina's mom, Leanne, was told by her doctors that she's never going to walk or talk. Christina was lucky to be able to defy these predictions. But she was even luckier that through a lot of help from her mom, she found an art teacher that at an early age helped her find her talent. Christina started a nonprofit called A Brighter Way. And through A Brighter Way, Christina teaches doctors and patients how to paint and brightens the lives of patients in pain clinics and in cancer centers all around. She also teaches doctors not to make the mistake of looking at a person and diagnosing their disability. A lot of doctors tell Christina, you know, now that I've met you and I've seen how you're teaching me, I will never look at a cerebral palsy patient again the same way. We're lucky to live in a world where there is a rich set of input technologies in it for our digital lives. But unfortunately, these tablets and eye trackers often lock us into a very rich but digital-only domain. It's all pixels in glass on a screen. We were trying to solve that problem by roboticizing the outputs. There's a lot of input, but there's no outputs. So we took an airbrush, and we made it a robot airbrush. And through that, we were seeking to gain access to the old and loved world of canvases and ink and palettes outside of the computer screen. I was lucky enough to meet Benjamin Tritt, an artist that came to MIT about the same time. And his goal was to teach engineers how to reverse engineer the process of painting out of hope that they will build robots that painters will then use in their processes. Ben taught us something even more important. He taught us that by looking at the robots and saying, hey, let's make a robot that holds a brush, we were making a fundamental mistake. In Ben's view, which I now hold to, the robot is not merely holding a brush. The robot is a brush. And they're not really different. To a caveman, a brush is technology. And just because robots are high tech, we tend to bin them into this tool category. So we sought out to build a platform that hides the technology and enables a person to use robot as a, robots and robotics in general as a conduit for expression. In the images here on the left, you see a person painting on a canvas through an eye tracker. And the computers are nowhere to be seen. And the ro even the robot is hiding behind the canvas. The customization of such a robot is extremely important. So we built it in a way that either the user or their caregiver could set the final tone. You might have a tremor, and you might want to get rid of it. Or maybe you want the tremor to show up in the painting. We didn't make any assumptions when we designed it. And we created an easy UI for people to create these last mile configurations themselves. 
We've expanded on this idea and created Art Matter. Art Matter tries to bridge between the digital and physical phys Art Matter tries to bridge between the digital and physical worlds. You see on the top left our rover-style robot painting Marvin Minsky. And on the bottom right, you see an artist using what we extracted from an inkjet printer and made an, a handheld brush. We're happy that a lot of the artists that we're giving prototypes to refuse to give them back. <laughs> we were afraid. We were afraid that they will see this as assistive technology that's designed for someone else. And as Sarah Hendren said, all technology is assistive technology, and we believe in that strongly, too. So we're, we're very happy that they refuse to bring it back, and we're happy that we see them actually embrace this technology. What we hear from them is that the fact that it's letting them do something that they couldn't quite do the same way another, in another way um, is something that they quickly incorporate into their processes. I wonder about computers in the 60s, when they were giant and took whole rooms in order to make simple computations. No wonder that people had a hard time thinking about them as creative tools. I think that we are experiencing the same issue with robotics today. Robots are all around us, but we're still stuck in this thing where we're thinking about them because of the things they're really good at. And I think that if we shift our thinking and realize that they could extend our abilities, they could open domains that previously are inaccessible, and they could make a voice for people who might not have it and be in the most need for it. I would like to invite to the stage Christina Powell to share a message. I always wanted to take care of people thinking about becoming a doctor or a nurse. So I am taking care of people in another way with my artwork. I don't think of myself being disabled, the disabled, they are just like you, but with another ability. Don't forget, we are all unique, but we are the same. I walk slowly, but I'm really just like you. When I did try those robots and MIT with Tom and thought of myself, and I was not supposed to walk and talk. I would be excited and then find out and say, that's my way to talk. If you want to share another message, there's, there's, a, um, a, there's time. I don't know. I can get the words out. We were worried about Christina because she, when excitement builds like this, the tears can come. But I'll tell you, I'm the one having a hard time. I'm trying to think of how you go from adopting Christina from Peru, barely getting back to the States, um, the day I was supposed to come, my visa was expiring, and there's no time to go through all of that, but I was the happiest mom in the whole world. And a couple weeks after that, for the very first time, I had to leave Christina with a babysitter, and my husband and I had a business function. We didn't come home that night, because we had a tragic auto accident. And yeah. So what I'm trying to say is, you never know what's gonna happen. And I wrote something once that said, happiness, tragedy, hope, and miracles. 
you can't lose hope. Because I'll tell you something, being the happiest mom in the day, the doctor said, you know, she's probably not going to walk or talk. And I could barely move at the time from the accident. And thinking, what did somebody just tell me? And I remember that day having tears. But in the end, the next day they were gone. And I said, nobody's going to take the happiness away. And here's Christina, who defied everything, right? Now, that's not to say she worked harder than anybody could ever imagine. And she still does. So she has me working all the time, too, so that we can. But the joy that we get, people will say sometimes, because Christina works with mainly hospitals and cancer centers and that. And in fact, why don't you just share what you do with them real quick? Um, I, I give my artwork as gifts to them. And um, I give them to the cancer patients and the family members and caregivers who are with them. And they get so excited. And uh, why don't you sum it up with a week ago at the cancer center with um, one of the patients who was so excited, and then what happened later? Um, he, um, he, he, he just went back to his room to check on his wife, and um, came back to mom and I and say, my wife and I had a, just had a terrible day of, of our lives, but you really brought some joy to, to us. And um, he, he had te tears, he, um, but it was really, um, I am amazing. It was it's amazing. amazing. This happens all the time. <laughs> all the time. <laughs> and I'll just share. She was just a week at Brigham and Women's with all the patients and her artwork there. And I think this sums up the whole week. There were two sisters, and they were from Upper State, New York. And they were so excited with Christina being there and talking with her and having fun and looking at all the artwork. And they just couldn't believe all that was there. And then all of a sudden, the one sister said to the other, I can't believe it, but she said, my terminal brain tumor um, feels better now. Um, when people say to Christina, doesn't this depress you? You know what? It's exactly the opposite. We leave there, and I forgot to mention, we came to Boston from Michigan because of my medical. So how do you come for medical, which isn't so fun, and all of this happened? Those are the miracles. And now because of tall, there are more miracles, and Christina says, yeah. I'm going to be the voice for those people that like her, maybe can't, couldn't walk or talk, but I can be a voice and help them get through it too. Yeah. And you wanted to say one thing really important before we quit, and I think. Oh, oh I think you wanted to thank say. you for, it's an honor to be part of your part. The honor is all mine, Christina, thank you.